All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Nikita Visniak with the amazing Dr. Pratna Natasha Ram. Natasha Ram. And Dr. Ram is one of the contributors to our textbook that I will do a screen share here in a second for you. She is a major contributor to our textbook on nutrition. So evidence-informed nutrition, three steps to feeling better. You can do it. We can help. We can help. <laughs> we can help. Absolutely. And you're eating for optimal health. So today you're going to talk specifically about the diet that is your expertise, which I believe, once this loads in here in a second, it's is a Chinese traditional medicine, which is uh, Xi Lao. Xi Lao diet. Okay. And in fact, I'm even saying that wrong. I shouldn't even call it a diet. You were saying it's more of a lifestyle choice, right? Yeah, definitely is. And so this is a thing where Chinese traditional medicine says that this is a lifestyle. This is how we eat. And this is how we stay well. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is your own experience? Like, what is your background for your own education? What do you have? Oh, gosh, I've been a student uh, for 100 years. So what? <laughs> What haven't I done? Uh, but mainly uh, what I love to do at my clinic is physical medicine. So mm -hmm. pain management and care. I have some kinesiology. I'm a cool lady, actually. You are a I cool, super cool lady. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, uh, Chinese traditional medicine. So I have a doctorate in that and um, really love it because uh, a lot of the times uh, my even my own tenants is uh, food is medicine and Absolutely. Chinese traditional medicine says the same thing. Yep. Excellent. All right. Why don't you just walk us through really quick right here then? Oh, so basically the layout of the layout of this lifestyle choice. Right. So this is uh, two pages of informational goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could put more, uh, but uh, here it is. Yep. <laughs> Um, so in the beginning, I talk about how we move chi. So chi is the life force. You could even think about chi as a uh, metabolic force or even the way that uh, cellular respiration um, occurs. And that's Excellent. The way that why medicine would look at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what that's one of the biggest things that you're able to do so well, why, why I refer patients to you on a regular basis and recommend you is because you're able to bring Eastern Western medicine together in ways that we can kind of understand it together. So excellent. Oh, right. definitely. And so um, if you see a lot of the times there's going to be patterns of how we nourish our bodies. One of the things is uh, just on the bottom here by season. Mm -hmm. So eating with the seasons, we are headed into summer and uh, we have the, the heart and the small intestine. These mm -hmm. are yin yang pairs. So a lot of the times we're always trying to maintain that balance of uh, yin and yang. Mm -hmm. In the summer, we do want to have more cooling foods. And, and then it goes a little bit further on what colored foods do we want to eat to nourish our bodies? So red colored foods. Mm -hmm. You could probably think about that as uh, nourishing with pomegranates. And uh, one of our favorites is watermelon. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Super popular in the summertime. And when you're looking at the recommendations for the season and everything, it looks like this dietary recommendation or lifestyle choice is selecting things that are seasonally available. Right, right. Yeah. And so uh, do take some caution because uh, we can still get strawberries in the wintertime. Uh, that means that they, they aren't grown seasonally. They're grown somewhere else. And so Chinese traditional medicine does focus on if it's winter, we are eating more root vegetables. If it's mm -hmm. summer, we are eating the things that are grown on the trees, on the ground, right at that season. Yeah. And you're also looking at things that seem to be more naturally sourced as well, like minimal processing whenever possible. Yeah. Right. Right. Because um, packaged foods do not show up in Chinese traditional medicine. At Absolutely. All. <laughs> right. And so we're talking about thousands of years of history on how this these lifestyle choices and recommendations came to be. And they do recommend those simple basics right there. Now, right. getting back into the energetics and food preparation, what are some recommendations here that you're making? Yeah, so on top of this, how do we cook this food? How do we process this food? So we are going to go to a lot of barbecues. That's always our favorite for summer. Yep. And so this says that uh, when we are barbecuing and adding heat, we're adding more yang energy. And if you go a little bit further down, um, we see that there's late summer. Smoking those foods would be a lot more uh, advisable just because there is yang plus there's also a drying so we can see late summer there's more like dampness you can actually feel it on the body surface as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. excellent and even if you're looking at the food preparation me mechanisms that are given here they're again minimally invasive they're not doing a lot of changes for looking for like over preparation of the food so it's excellent to see too common with a lot of the top recommended western diets mediterranean vegan right. type diets like low low risk uh, blue zone groups do a lot of this stuff too but we'll talk more about that later okay right. in in tcm we're mm -hmm. looking at the this changes right here so how you actually modify the dietary intake based on the age of the patient that you're working with 
Right. So that one that you just uh, circled there, early childhood, we are um, looking at um, children who are abundant sources of young energy. They are growing very rapidly. So we do want to nourish the, the spleen and stomach. And uh, we never talk about spleen and biomedicine unless you get kicked by a soccer ball and you're like, <laughs> oh no, my spleen. Yeah, um, but, but, but just like, I'll make one point on that because we've done cadaver dissections together. A lot of yes, people have, don't yeah. even real this, realize the size of the spleen. It is a large, big organ that takes right. up a lot of space. So yeah, relatively important as far as size wise goes too. But anyways, back onto the main topic here. Yeah. Right. Oh, and so yeah. these yin yang pairs actually are called the middle jowl. So it does transform and transport up and down. So it does give that nourishment um, and uh, provides that nourishment into the blood. And then uh, just going up a little bit more um, about the other age groups. And so as we get into adolescence, we are focused more on the reproductive health and nourish it, nourishing that along. Adulthood. This is uh, very interesting because once you get into adulthood, you're you're very different types of humans. And so um, even looking at a young body type, hot body type, uh, mm -hmm. phlegm damp, how we start to eat, how we move around some of those foods to nourish or even move us back to uh, that that balance. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you can see how it changes as we get older, too. Right. So. As you're going through, you can see into adulthood, strongest constitution of life, and then you can see you're making recommendations right there. How do we change things once we get into these more advanced age groups? So the advanced age group, um, more, more so does it focus on uh, the yin-yang pair of the kidney and the uh, urinary bladder. Mm -hmm. So these ones hold essence. And um, so as we get older, um, the bones, the, um, the hair starts to change and whiten. And so we want to focus on foods, which is at the top of this page, that are more um, related to kidney and uh, urinary bladder, the color black. So you can see that there are some black seeds in there. There's you, even the grapes could be the dark colored um, uh, uh, grapes there. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing more nourishing as we progress and advance in age. Yeah, excellent. All right, and then we're looking here for recommendations for overall for the food, yes. you know, yeah, these are the key ones right here. This is, I think the most important part actually, but walk us through some of your recommendations here. Dr. Oh, wait Dr. a minute, Mayer. I think everything's important. Everything <laughs> is important, you're right, but okay, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. But this is the one that I actually like the right best. So, yeah, 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 exactly. This is the one that I like the best right here, though, when you were going through, because a lot of the food prep and everything you're talking about in these key recommendations are almost exactly what we see recommended on the most popular Western diets. Yeah. And so there are a lot of um, uh, similarities between the diets. And so when we do look at the way that Chinese traditional medicine looks at dieting, um, or even Shi Lao, that, that lifestyle, how they say, hey, if you add more spicy and hot foods over time, and even with the fresh and cold foods, it causes conflict in the middle gel. Mm -hmm. So we start to see more phlegm, more of that heaviness feeling, and uh, we can't move um, as effectively, or um, even in a metabolic sense. Mm -hmm. And so these two uh, can cause us to be really sluggish. So um, that does slow down that uh, transportation and transformation as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. And then as we continue on here, we're looking yeah. at meals that should, you know, mixing meals should not be mixed. This was one of the key recommendations I thought you made. Yes. Um, so uh, here, this what Chinese traditional medicine says, when you are eating, you're consciously eating. So um, a lot of the patients that I see that we are trying to work on parasympathetic mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of like ways of eating um, that you want to do one activity. Yeah. So if one activity you can consider is eating, then we don't have the TV on, we don't have the phone beside us, or we're not trying to uh, run after the dog or anything like that. So mm -hmm. um, eating and then the last point here is focusing on chewing to get that nourishment and um, absorb that into your body. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, again, standard recommendations here from TCM. I just want to bring in one of our recommendations here. So you should be looking at a slide that kind of shows recommendations of life or activity throughout the day. But one of the biggest things that people are missing is this social food preparation and cooking and eating time. Make it dedicated for you, your friends, your family, whoever you're with, and you'll see a much better outcome with most diets, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop the screen share right here. And I'm going to say thank you very much, Dr. Ram, for joining us. Thank and you for I, having me. I appreciate your time very much. Okay. And we'll see you all in the next video at a seminar. You can find Dr. Ram at her clinic as well in South Surrey. And we'll chat with you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye.